Welcome folks, Mac T back, and I have this used oil analysis of the Max Oil Pro Max Nano Plus 5W20 at 247 hours. Well, what is 247 hours? 247 hours for me was around 10,500 miles, and uh, we did the test. This is real world, and uh, this is how it turned out in this 3.5 Duratec that it was ran in and uh, according to the report they came back and said all sorts of stuff but we're gonna go first to what does this oil cost and where can I buy it uh, it's $28.95 for a five quart bucket of this stuff you can buy it at Walmart online I don't think you can find it on the shelf or it comes out to about $5.79 a quart so go there you can buy it and uh, use it in your vehicle if you want but uh, anyway, the lab report basically came back and said, hey, my high mileage engine that I was testing this in is doing excellent as far as wear. And we, I just passed 286,000 miles on this 3.5 Duratec, and it's running sweet. So basically, they uh, came out and said that it had better wear than the previous testing. In other words, less wear metals were noticed in this sample even though it ran longer so I guess that's a plus for the old nano plus as they say so uh, they recommended hey the 247 I could probably bump it up another 50 hours but there's one caveat that I will have to discuss with you at the end of this as to what I would have to do to go that additional 50 hours now, as far as everything else goes with the oil, we're going to start out with aluminum at three parts per million. That's what the used sample was showing in it. Chromium was zero parts per million, and the iron was set at eight parts per million, which isn't bad uh, for an engine of this mileage. 280,379 miles is where it was changed at. Copper was at three parts per million. Not bad. So uh, you can see this engine is wearing mighty fine for the mileage that it has. There was absolutely no lead in the oil and no tin was detected. Molybdenum, that's right, Molly B was sitting at a really good amount of 52 parts per million, which is not too terribly bad. I don't think it had a high content when it started. Nickel was zero and the manganese was at one with the silver at zero. Uh, titanium measured at a mere one part per million. And then of course the potassium was zero parts per million also. The boron ended up being five parts per million in the test. And then of course the silicon was 10 parts per million. And we always wanna keep track of the potassium and silicon. That's what, especially silicon because on the Duratec, uh, water or coolant is always present. Uh, if you want to make sure you don't have a water pump leak. Sodium was at 5 parts per million, and the calcium was at 1,930 parts per million. Not a bad standing for this oil because it wasn't a high content calcium oil in the first place. Magnesium was at 114 parts per million, which is decent enough, and then the phosphorus was at 690 parts per million. Pretty run of the milk number there. And as we all want, we want a little zinc in there, and it was at 771, which is pretty much uh, right on the money as far as where we started out with no barium detected in the oil in the process. Now, as far as what was in the actual oils themselves, uh, you know, we got the MSDS here, and, and these days, manufacturers aren't really giving up much in the oils. Everything's a trade secret. So you can see here, it, it does actually say trade secret a couple times. We got a little bit of zinc. We got a little long chain alkali theocarbamide metal complex in there. Now our SUS viscosity going back at that again is 55.2. Keep in mind it started out at a 54.10. So it did thicken up just slightly over the run. Uh, the CST viscosity started out at 8.50 and it ended up at 8.84 still within the limits as far as what we're looking for for the viscosity 
but it did thicken up slightly. One thing that did happen is it started out at 430 degrees for its flash point, and by the time everything was said and done, we were at 410 degrees for the flash point. The fuel mixture and everything else was all good, you know, everything else in the oil, uh, as they say, was not much. Antifreeze, water, and solubles. Uh, the TBN was at 1.6, uh, which they mentioned in the write-up there that everything was good to go. I could have went another 50 hours. Keep in mind at 1.0, you pretty much are considered exhausting your, uh, you know, your uh, oxidants and everything else in the oil, and you won't have anything left to uh, help you with that. So. You want to make sure that whatever you do, you do monitor your oils and know when to change them. Uh, but basically, overall, a dollar per quart, uh, more than the price of the Pro Max. Now, that, that's the sister to this oil, and it is not the Nano Plus, uh, so it is slightly more expensive. Uh, but it is basically a Group 3 oil, and uh, that is per a phone conversation with the people at Max Oil. Uh, essentially, it's competitive oil. It could it be an annual use? Well, based on what I was testing, 15,000 miles, most people drive, say, out on the average 12. This could essentially be an annual oil with one cabot, as with all annual oils are. So, hey, Mobile One, you're in competition here. You got this uh, oil that can definitely go the long haul with you and compete with your annual protection claims in some manners. Uh, but the frequency of the change, uh, basically 300 hours of driving, no towing, and approximately 15,000 miles. That's what you could probably do. Uh, but note that this oil did have a high burn-off rate. And the reason I stopped the test at about 250 hours is I was at the point where I had to add a quart of oil or change the oil. Now, I always err on the side of caution and just change the oil. That way I get the full-blown usage and results. Because if you add another quart of oil, you just bump up all the additives and everything else, and then your test is sort of skewed in that manner. So I always like to just run it till it's a quart low, and then test the oil. And then, of course, we all know if we add oil, then you know it's going to bump everything up, and of course it's going to make it to 15,000 miles. Because you added a quart of oil, you freshened it up. So uh, that is something that you need to know when you're running this oil. If you start getting down to a quart, it won't hurt. It'll just help boost it up so you can make that 15,000 mile run easily. Uh, the oil filter I did use, the Pure Later Boss, is good for up to 15,000 miles. So uh, yeah, you know, technically if I wanted to, I could have dumped another quart in and kept on going and probably been all right based on the oil test results. But you should always follow your owner's manual when you're taking and doing any type of work as far as your oils and everything else, the change frequencies, your driving conditions, and all of that. Now this is an all highway use uh, test, and I will tell you that I have an all city test that I have at the lab now that is getting checked out, and I will post the results of that in comparison to this one. So once I get the all city driving, I will post these both together and we'll compare all highway versus all city, the number of hours and number of miles. I will tell you the miles are, are uh, far different, but the hours are almost exactly the same. So it'll be an excellent comparison to see the same oil in the same type of Duratec engine, same model year, everything, to see how this oil rea reacted to all city, high idle, versus all highway. Then you guys can really know, is this oil worth it and when do I need to really change the oil? Well, that's it for this test. Make sure you take and like and subscribe Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube. Don't forget Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook. I also got Mac T Garage on Facebook and my Mac T Garage channel on YouTube also. And uh, hey, uh, don't forget the band of one. They always got some great music. My feet hit the floor today and I'm having a great day. And I want you to have a great day too. And Mercy Grill's got a couple one-liners for you. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.